What to do about DC on the mains? Now, I will explain what all that is because a lot of you don't even know what that means. <laughs> it comes from uh, George, Giori, in London. Um, hey, Paul, I have a pesky set of monoblocks that hum at certain times of the day. I'm sure it has something to do with the pub around the corner and happy hour. <laughs> it may. Um, a friend thinks that DC might be the cause of the problem. What exactly is happening to the electrical supply when we talk of DC on the mains? And how does this happen? What can be done to help? Um, would the kinds of inline DC filters that can be bought help? And if so, where should they be placed? Before the power bores or alternatively individual pieces of equipment? Many thanks again and keep up the good work. Thank you, sir, I will. I'm raising a warm pint of ale to you and all the team at PS Audio. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, man. I've tried that warm ale. I don't like it. Give me a good old cold, I mean, I, I love the pubs in England. I loved them more a long time ago before all the big beer companies bought them out and only served certain kinds, but I have tried and tried and tried to drink warm ale and man, it just, for me, beer has to be cold and crisp and have flavor. Uh, a lot of the American piss water stuff is just like uh, carbonated yellow something with some alcohol and it's awful. But I, here in Colorado, we have so many craft beer options and I limit myself to one beer a day. I do. I just got, got to watch the tummy and, uh, you know, too much alcohol isn't good. But I, I do. I also have a couple glasses of wine, but as far as beer, how do we get off onto beer? Oh, he's toasting warm ale. To me. <laughs> you just go and enjoy that. Warm ale. Okay. So the mains, as he refers to them, is, of course, our electrical system, which is the wall, the wall socket, okay? And what comes out of there is AC, alternating current. And we expect that that AC in, in your country is 230 volts going between plus and minus, plus and minus in a sine wave 50 times a second. Here in this country, it's 120 cycles, or 120 volts, 60 cycles, 60 times a second we're moving very smoothly between plus and minus, plus and minus, up and down. And that sine wave should be pure AC. So that comes to us from a transformer on a power pole or sometimes in a uh, underground facility, but somehow or other there's a big, big transformer. A transformer's maybe, oh, up to about here, about, you know, big, big thing. And it's taking 30, 40,000 volts and transforming it down to our 230, okay? And what comes out is AC, plus, minus, plus, minus, and there should be no DC. So sometimes, though, when our transformers hum, especially if they hum at certain times of the day and other times not, we know that there could potentially be DC on the line, direct current, which we battery voltage, right? We shouldn't have that. And that can be caused from any number of things. Um, sometimes in, in the way that homes and businesses, if they're tied together on the same transformer are wired, one, what we call a leg, because uh, the transformer has multiple windings, so th this leg goes over here and this leg goes over there, but they're all sort of off the same transformer, it can become uneven. It can weigh down one side of the leg uh, at the expense of the other, and so you get an imbalance which can be interpreted by equipment as DC. And, and let me tell you what actually happens. When you have an imbalance or when you have DC, direct current, on the AC line, when it goes into your transformer, it slams the, the mag, because a transformer has this, this magnetic field that it's building, and there are these laminations, these, whether they're uh, winds of lamination on a toroid, or they're stacked in an EI transformer, we're using those to intensify the magnetic field and make it more efficient, 
and we have a primary, which is one coil, and a secondary, which is another, intertwined into this metal. If you take and shove everything over to one side, which DC will do, so that when it's going this way, it's kind of pushed over here, as opposed to when it goes this way down uh, in, in our sine wave, it's, 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 it's not as skewed to the side. Those laminations start vibrating and they, they, they because they want to have this evenness to them. Kind of hard to describe just jumping up and down with my hands. But trust me, that when you have DC, it'll make your transformer hum. So what can you do about that? What, and, and you don't know if it's because of the, if it's becoming unbalanced, if there's a leakage on the transformer. There's any number of reasons that it could happen. So we can get rid of that by, well, you can call the utility company and say, hey, because that's not supposed to be there. But if you want to take care of it yourself, there are inline filters. And basically what they are is a couple of diode bridges. So a diode bridge is, is a, uh, here's a bridge. There are four diodes, and it's what we use to convert AC to DC in a power supply. So it's, it's four diodes in, in this sort of star configuration, so that when the AC comes in at the top, at the other, so you have four points where those diodes reach, right? So two of the points is where the top and bottom of the AC go in, and the other two points are where the plus and the minus DC come out. Now, if you put two of those in series, you'd think, oh my god, I'm going to get DC out. Well, no. You're, you're going to separate out the AC from the DC, but it, you're still, without a capacitor tied to this thing, you're still getting your just AC, except it's chopped and there's a little bit of a gap, right? And then it goes like that. Again, I probably should be using a, a, a whiteboard with apologies because I, I, it just occurred to me and I'm just doing this video. So these are, you know, I'd like to keep these as live as possible. Um, the kind of diodes we use have a 0.6 volt threshold. So anything below 0.6 volts doesn't get through. Aha! Now think about that. If we have DC that's 0.6 volts worth of DC, and that's actually 0.6 volts to 1 volt, it's about all you need to make a transformer hum, that will block it, and then we still get the AC through. So by using two in series, we get 1.2 volts that don't get through the two diode bridges, the DC, and it effectively blocks it, and we get AC. And that's how they work. We used to make a product called the Humbuster, and that's what it did. And we probably should make one again. But anyway, yes. And where do you put it? Oh, just wherever your incoming power is to your equipment, put it there. Um, you can put it just before whatever transformer is humming. Uh, if you have a power plant, put it for that. All, all of our power plants, the AC regenerators, they have those built in. So if you were using that, uh, the problem is, and we do our best to get rid of that, uh, this will then hum, but your equipment won't. So then sometimes you need to put that on the input. Okay, enough babbling about AC and DC. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for the question. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.